that offset fork, you just lean it over in the course, you just flop that front wheel over, just get over, and it's like, ah, back wheels just sliding around, it's like so thin, it's sweet, it's really enjoyable, you should try it. Enjoy, my friend. Hey folks, Kevin here with Fanatic Bike and we're back again for another installment of our employee bike checks. So I picked up a Transition Carbon Sentinel this winter, been building it up with some parts that I've been curious to try out, um, touch on a few of those and why I went with those particular products here as we go. Um, first of all, I want to talk about the Sentinel frame. It's definitely a, a new take for Transition on geometry. They got slack, they got longer, they got lower, and they got even more fun if you can believe that. So a 64 degree head tube angle up front keeps it comfortable in all of the steepest trails that we have around here. Really happy with that. Uh, suspension, we've got a little bit of a mullet situation here. We've got business up front with a 160 millimeters Fox 36 Performance Elite fork. Again, with that offset fork to kind of bring that trail in underneath you. Uh, in the back, we've got a little more party action with 140 millimeters of super efficient, playful, uh, suspension coming from the float D, uh, DPX2. This bike comes with 160, 140. Um, I don't think I'd want to go with anything less on a bike like this than 160 up front, but the 140 millimeter shock in the back plays really well into the playful attitude that these bikes really encourage. Uh, starting with the wheels, in terms of components, I've got the We Are One Agent 29 wheel set. Um, this wheel set is amazing. Very supple for a carbon wheel set. Plenty light in my opinion. Uh, if you want to know a little bit more, check out this link. Brian has uh, done a pretty good review on these wheels if you want to check that out in more depth. I've got the Hope Floating Rotors as well, paired up on those hubs. 203 up front, 180 in the back. I've got 2.5 minion DHF up front, 2.4 DHR in the back. That combination is a no-brainer. If you don't want to think about what tires you're running in what situation, just go with the minions. You hardly can go wrong. Uh, in the back, I've got a Cush Core. I do want to add that little bit of suppleness. I am going from 170 mil travel bike on my last one, so 140, I might need a little bit of uh, leeway into some of that harsh, rough terrain. So the Cush Core definitely takes some of that sting out and it also protects the carbon wheels. So I'm a big fan of that. For the cockpit, I went with a Chromag bar and stem. I've got the Biza 35 mil stem with Biza carbon handlebars at 800 millimeters wide. Uh, I like the control of that setup. I've got the Hope Tech E3 V4 brakes. I really like a four piston brake and the power and modulation on these Hopes are, are pretty impressive so far. It's a newer product that I've been wanting to try out. Obviously it comes in red and that was a big draw, but the performance so far has been pretty impressive. I uh, went with some Ergon grips. Just been curious about those grips. I've put my hands on them once or twice with some customer bikes and they have a really cool stealth gray look that match my cockpit. Um, on the headset, I went with reliability. I've got a Chris King headset, made in house stainless steel bearings, uh, super reliable. I don't really want to have to worry about replacing that in this crummy weather. Um, so I just went with the sure thing. Um, Hope Quick Release Levers. This is a super low seat tube. So even with the 170 mil dropper, I do end up moving my seat up and down a little bit, but that Hope seat lever is super quick and easy and reliable. I don't mind using that at all. Uh, Went with Chromag Lynx saddle. I really like Chromag saddles, uh, along with a lot of their other parts. Um, kind of just keep it fluid between front and back. Uh, GX Eagle drivetrain. For me, that's a no-brainer. Uh, the performance is every bit on par as their upper level stuff. The GX puts it at a reasonable price point, and I am just really stoked on a gear to chill in. 
So that's basically a wrap up of the goods and why I picked what on my bike. If you want to know a little bit more about the bike itself, Jason and Jaden did a more thorough review. You can check that link out and follow that to get a little bit more information, find out if this bike is right for you. Uh, for me, I wanted a bike that could absolutely slay the steep downhills that we have in this area. And I also wanted something that was playful and efficient enough to have fun on every trail I came across. This bike hits all those nails right on the head and I couldn't be more stoked on my choice.